Dave here, raking profit, getting in a little morning coffee and just, uh, I got my cats running around. So if you hear a bunch of craziness in the background, they're, uh, they're having a party this morning. But today I want to talk about a topic that, well, we actually got a question about yesterday inside of Reselling Freedom. So first off, congratulations to everybody who joined the Reselling Freedom community. We've had over 150 people join, so thank you so much. And we actually had a, uh, a question from one of the members, Chad, who was asking, how do I prep items? I guess Chad had a bunch of electronics and he had like a CD player, some random items, books, different things like that. And he wasn't entirely sure, how do you put things in a box? Like, do you have to wrap things up? Do you have to put everything in poly bags or poly mailers? Like, is there a certain way that you have to prep an item before you ship it to Amazon FBA? And uh, that's a really, really great question. Now, before we get into that, if you see me swaying back and forth, I just got this new electric desk and this little treadmill that goes underneath it. So it's been uh, a good way to burn some extra calories. What's going on, Teresa Thrifts? Great to see you. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, as I made in some previous videos, I put on a lot of weight this year. So today's actually day 18 of the 75 day challenge getting in a lot of exercise, drinking a gallon of water a day, reading 10 pages, taking a project, pro, uh, a progress pick, no alcohol, and uh, following a diet. So feeling really great. So let's get into Chad's question. And again, appreciate everybody who joined Reselling Freedom. If you want coaching from me and 10 other coaches, daily coaching almost every single day, five to 10 calls a week, extra uh, mentorship, videos, eBooks, resources, definitely check it out down below. We have a founding members launch right now and you'll never find a price as good as it is right now. It's almost, it's literally a steal for what you get. So let's get into it. So how do you prep items? So let's go through some different types of items and uh, let's discuss how I prep them, okay? Now, just so you know, when you're selling on Amazon, if an item needs to be prepped, they'll let you know. So when you go to list an item, like for, say for example, it's some type of health and beauty item, and maybe it's a liquid, it'll tell you, you have to poly bag it, you have to prep it. So if it tells you that you have to prep it, it'll typically give you uh, a heads up of what you have to do. What's going on, Peter? So for anything that's liquid, or if it's something that's really fragile, you might have to make sure you protect it and bubble wrap it or poly bag it. For the most part though, if you're watching my channel, you're probably flipping books, right? You're probably flipping DVDs, uh, electronics, maybe you're going after board games. Let's talk about how to prep some of these different items right here, okay? So let's talk about board games. If a board game is brand new sealed, I don't do any prep at all. I just throw it in the box, that's it. I throw the F and SKU label over the barcode on the outside and I throw it in the box because it's brand new sealed. There's really no prep that you have to do. If the board game is uh, not new and it's open, typically what I'll do is I'll get some stretch wrap that I buy from Walmart and I'll just wrap it around a couple of times, put some tape on it and call it a day. Throw the label on the outside, make sure that uh, everything's sturdy, make sure that nothing's going to fall out of the, uh, of the board game, right? Uh, with DVDs, if it's used and I feel like the case might open up, I'll throw it in a poly bag and then label it. If it's brand new sealed, I'm not gonna poly bag it. I'm not gonna do anything. You just throw it in the box. Uh, a book, never poly bag it. I don't really sell books as new. Most of my books are used, so I'm just throwing it in a box. Now, some people are a little nervous about selling books. They think the customers are gonna get upset if there's damage to it uh, or if it's not in perfect condition. I've sold thousands of books, thousands of DVDs. Um, I've never really had any issues. Of course, you're gonna have some issues from time to time with customers that are a pain in the butt, but there's no way you're gonna make them happy to begin with. So I don't waste my time. For me, it's not worth it to poly bag or, you know, put the extra protection forward, uh, you know, to really make sure that they're so beautiful in such great shape. Because you gotta remember, they're gonna get thrown around anyways from UPS, uh, UPS. it's gonna go to the warehouse, they're gonna throw it around. So. I mean, it's just not necessary. So for board games, there's really no prep that you have to do unless it's used, just stretch wrap it. Uh, use DVDs, you can put it in a poly bag if it's used, just in case. Or what I actually do sometimes is you could go on Amazon and you get these little circle stickers that are clear and you could stick it over um, 
like the closing part, so it just adds a little extra force and protection if you don't wanna have to use a poly bag. Now remember, if you are gonna prep something with a poly bag, or you're gonna put some stretch wrap around it, you always wanna make sure that there's a suffocation warning on the uh, poly bag, or even if it's some type of wrapping, just because terms of service is pretty clear about that with like the suffocation choking uh, notifications and whatnot. So uh, make sure you do that. Same with CDs, if the CDs used, I might put it in a poly bag or just put a, a clear piece of tape over it just to keep it together. The biggest thing is you just wanna make sure if something's used that it's not going to open up. And again, you wanna make sure that you pay attention when you're listing items. It'll tell you if prep is required, right? So there'll be like a little symbol there that shares that this item needs to be prepped. And if you click through, it'll share with you how, um, how you should prep it. Now, if you have something that's very, very fragile and obviously, like, let me give an example. Say you are selling maybe a CD player or let's just say that you're selling, um, I don't know, like an iPod or something, you wanna protect it. What you can do is you can actually put some bubble wrap around it, okay, to protect it, then put it in a poly bag to close it off, make sure the poly bag has a suffocation warning on it, maybe put some tape over it, and then put that F and SKU label on the outside. You can also uh, put it into another box. So say you didn't wanna use a poly bag, maybe you really wanted to protect it, you can bubble wrap it, you can put it into a box, and then uh, you can put the label on the outside. Just make sure the box has a, a do not separate sticker on it because I've heard that it might confuse Amazon workers and they could open up the box. So again, if you put it a box within a box, if you know what I mean, like there's a big box, you're shipping it out. If you're gonna put like this mug, you're gonna ship it out, poly bag it, bubble wrap it, throw it in a box and do put do not separate on that little box. Mark says, if I wanna ship a single item, then do I put the item in a box and then put that box in another box or just one box? So it just depends. You could put that one item, say for example, this was a, I don't know, say I was shipping out like a big tripod or something like that, Mark, and uh, maybe it took up the whole size of the box. The first thing you have to assess is, is this item going to get to the Amazon warehouse safely? Like a guitar, right? You would never put a guitar in a box without any protection, any bubble wrap, so on and so forth, because the first concern is, is this item gonna get damaged during shipment? And you guys know how USPS and UPS is. I mean, they deal with millions of packages, things get damaged. So step number one is protection, okay? Step number two is Amazon requiring that you prep it, right? Prep typically, um, you know, is gonna entail some type of like poly bag or um, typically it's like a poly bag or maybe putting it in a box or something like that. If there's no prep required, then just, you can put it in a poly mailer or in a box, but just remember you have to put the label on the outside of the item. So you could certainly put one item in the box mark, but just keep in mind that if you only put one item in the box, your shipping is gonna be really expensive per item. That's why I like to put as many items in the box as possible. So it lowers the price per shipping uh, per item. So typically I ship out items 30 to 50 cents per item when I put 20 to 50 items in a box it brings the price down. But yeah, you could absolutely put what one item in a box. And that's another question I get all the time. Like how many items can I put in the box? What can the weight of the box be? As long as it's less than 50 pounds, you could put as many items in the box as you want. There's no limit on how many items you could put in the box. So if I'm selling CDs or DVDs, sometimes there could be 50 or 80 items in a box. I, I ship in um, small boxes. 16 by, yeah, 16 by 12 by 12. I buy all my boxes off of Lowe's website. It's not the cheapest, but it's convenient for me and uh, it helps to build my business credit because I have a trade line over there. And uh, yeah, I just get like 100 to 200 boxes shipped to my house. And I typically buy 16 by 12 by 12 boxes, but then I also buy the 18 by 18 by 16s because sometimes I have oversized items that I, that I wanna ship out and I'll, I'll ship all my oversized items together. So really don't overthink the prep. Step number one, does Amazon require you to prep it? Which means there's certain items that um, Amazon is making you prep, which means if you don't, like if you have a liquid, like a shampoo or uh, a cologne or something like that, if you ship that just in the box with no poly bag or anything, 
you're gonna get in trouble, it's gonna go against your metrics. So when you scan these items or you list these items, it's gonna say prep is required, okay? And you can click on that and read what how they want you to prep it, okay? So step number one, does Amazon require prep? Step number two, is this item going to get to Amazon safely? So ask yourself, is this a fragile item? Is this an item that could get damaged? I wanna protect this item. Like if I was gonna ship out, you know, this electronic, you know, anchor charger, I'd wanna most likely bubble wrap it to protect it because this thing gets smashed around and then uh, maybe put it in a poly bag, throw some tape on it, label the outside and throw it in the box. Can you sell, can you put books and DVDs and board games and all different types of items in the box? Absolutely, you can mix and match. It really doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that when you're shipping in the box, that you put some void fill, some peanuts. Um, don't use newspaper. They don't want you to use newspaper because they say the ink could get on the item, but you just wanna make sure the box is really nice and compact when you're shipping to Amazon because the more space in the box, the more things are gonna move around and rattle. And if it's big and heavy, the force of it could damage other items. So you also wanna ask yourself, is this item gonna damage other items inside of the box? Now, make sure you tape the box really well because remember, people aren't treating your boxes with res respect for the most part. They're throwing them around, they're moving, they're working hard. So um, tape your box as well. How do I ship a bunch of guitars in one box? I have to put a sticker on each one? Yeah, exactly. So you'd have to uh, label each one. Um, first off, you'd have to make sure that you can sell the guitars on Amazon. If there's an Amazon listing there, you're gonna have to make sure you're approved that you're able to sell that item because it's not like eBay, the wild, wild west, where you can just sell whatever you want. On Amazon, there's approvals, um, there's restrictions, uh, there's brand gating, there's category gating. So make sure that you're eligible to be able to sell that item, get the Amazon seller app, and then look it up. Oh, okay, Mark says, yeah, I already sell as a merchant fulfilled. Yeah, so essentially all you have to do, Mark, is just uh, put everything in a box, prep it, label it, print out an F and SKU label, Amazon will give you that when you go through the process and uh, you throw it all in a box. So obviously guitars are pretty big, so you're gonna have to find the right size box. Just make sure that the box you ship out is less than 50 pounds, Mark. It can't be 50 pounds or heavier um, because it's against the terms of service. Back in the day, they used to allow you to write team lift on the side of the box and ship a box over 50 pounds. It has to be less than 50 pounds. The only way you could send out an item or a box more than 50 pounds is if it's like a, if it's a set of an item or if it's like a single item. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps. I just wanted to break down how to prep items. If you have any more questions about how to prep certain items, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'm just gonna take some questions, just enjoying this, this nice Monami electric desk, which is really cool. I've been really liking just working here. I'm not even kidding, guys. The best investment you can get for your health, get yourself one of these treadmills. I'm telling you, this thing was like $350. The standing desk was like $150. So for $500, bucks, now when I'm working, like, and I'll go back and forth between sitting and standing, but you could just stand and work, do your listings. Mark says the problem might be where the sticker would go. If I put, if I put the strap... If I put it on the strap, does that mean that they will peel it off? I don't wanna leave residue on the item. Yeah, so what you're gonna have to do is probably like stretch wrap the whole guitar or find a big plastic bag that you could put it in, which may be harder, harder than uh, hard to do. Or what you can do is you do box within a box. So if you could find a, just a small thin box to put it in, I don't know if you're gonna be able to, then you could obviously just put it in the box, make sure it's really nice and compact, right? So like, find a big, you know, like a long rectangular box, put the guitar in there and then label the outside of it with your label and then put a do not separate sticker and then put that box in a bigger box where maybe you stack up all the guitars in there in a big box. I hate shipping big items, it's a pain in the butt, but you're gonna have to get creative, but that's really the only way to go about it. Hey, what's up Mallory, good to see you. What speed are you on? I'm just going at like a half a mile per hour right now. So usually when I'm working, if I'm going too fast, then it'll be hard for me to kind of like think. So usually I go like only a mile per hour and it's not like burning that many calories, but like I'll be on this thing for like two hours sometimes and I'll look down, I'm like, oh, I just burned a hundred calories for free. Just free money, right? <laughs> so I appreciate you. I'm actually getting ready to go to the gym right now. I just want to bring you guys a little bit of value. Awesome, Mark, awesome.
Uh, T Smoke says, does it not make more sense to send Amazon the largest box size and fill it up, get value for money? Absolutely, if you can. Just remember, it has to stay with, uh, stay under 50 pounds. So with guitars or bigger items, it could get a bit more complicated. Peter says, shopping, buying, shipping your house. <laughs> uh, buying box shipping. Great video. Awesome, Peter. Appreciate you. Nice, Mallory. Well, appreciate you guys. Yeah, so today the plan is I'm going to hit the gym. What day is it today? Today is uh, is today Wednesday or Thursday. I'm like losing track of time. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? Today's Thursday. Yeah, today's Thursday. <laughs> How do you know you're an entrepreneur? You forget what day it is, right? Uh, yeah, so today's Thursday. So we're going to hit the gym. Uh, when I come back, I actually have about 25 boxes I have to get to Amazon FBA. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have about 17 boxes already done. So I have about another eight boxes that I have to, uh, they're already labeled and everything. I just have to weigh them out, print out the UPS label, and then um, I gotta get them outside for pirate ship to come pick them up. So that's the goal. Uh, a couple investments I made recently is, uh, I've actually upgraded into Inventory Lab. So I've been playing around with Inventory Lab and I purchased a Rolo printer. So I have a whole new system that I'm developing now for when all my items come to my house and I scan everything into a spreadsheet. And there's just a whole new system that I'm building out to be able to streamline my process because there's a lot of processes that I run today that are just completely out of date. Like there's just, there's a lot of stupid things I do in my business that are just very inefficient. And I, but I've been doing it for the last eight months, it works. There's just, there's always inefficiencies in your business and it's always good to take a look at your business and ask yourself, what am I doing that is just archaic? Like one thing that I do, and you guys might laugh, is I don't list my own items. What I do is I actually have someone on my team who we take all the pictures of all the items, upload them to a Google Drive, and then I have a virtual assistant who then goes in and uh, lists all the items for me and Exceller lists what we're using at this moment. And then uh, we complete the batch and then print out all the labels. It's just very time consuming. It would be way easier if I just scanned everything into a spreadsheet and set up some systems prior with like minimum prices, maximum prices, and then just be able to have less touch points. So even a simple system like that definitely takes just a lot of work and you have to figure out certain things. So that's really what I'm gonna start to attack today. Because even though you might only save an hour per week, that adds up, right? That's 52 hours over the, you know, over the next, uh, year, which is like a whole week of inefficiencies over a year that I could fix just by spending a couple of hours. So I'm always asking myself, what am I doing that is just stupid? What am I doing that I could improve? Uh, what's a system or a process that, um, you know, I could just improve on and you never want to get to the point where you're like, Oh, I know it all or everything's great. There's always something you can improve. So that's what I'm gonna be attacking today. Also, uh, yeah, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who watched live and uh, everybody commenting and everybody just being very supportive. I really appreciate it. And I'd encourage all you guys as well, you know, get yourself on camera, start making some YouTube videos or some Instagram content. The networking and the ability to be able to just communicate with other sellers keeps you accountable, keeps you motivated. People like Ryan, what's going on? Good morning, great to see ya. We're doing a little uh, morning walk on the, uh, with the, the little electric desk and the little treadmill underneath it. But yeah, the accountability is huge and the support is huge. So get yourself you know, into a community, engage, watch videos. If you're in the Reselling Freedom community, which again, I'll link up down below, come in, hang out with us. We have literally like, five to 10 live coaching calls. We have five calls this week. Next week, I think we're gonna have eight live coaching calls all about Amazon and shipping and selling and listing, setting up your account, scaling, sourcing, scanning, all the apps, all the tools. So definitely come hang out with us. Get yourself into the community and just start taking action every single day. It's a process, right? Starting a business, whether it's an eBay business or an Amazon business, it's a process, but you can't think about, oh man, it's so much work. There's so many things I have to know and learn. You have to say to yourself, what's one thing I could learn today? What's one thing I could do to move myself forward? Okay, maybe today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna sign up for my Amazon account. 
And then maybe the next day it's like, all right, I'm gonna sit down and then I'm gonna get the postcard that Amazon sent me. I'm gonna upload this. I'm gonna send them my driver's license, get that approved. And then maybe the next day is like, all right, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna figure out how to prep items. I'm gonna watch Steve's video. And even though maybe 80% of it was like, what is he talking about? Oh, I learned this, these, these couple things and I'm starting to slowly put the pieces of the puzzle together. And I think that's the key. Every day, just take a step forward, learn something new. Don't compare yourself to other people and start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. That's all you can do, right? And I was just telling people in the reselling freedom community yesterday on the coaching call, it's like learning a different language. I remember when I was in college, you know, back in what, 2010, yeah, 2011, I remember sitting in a chemistry class and I remember thinking to myself, what the heck is going on in this chemistry class? But every time I went to the class and I went to the next class, I slowly put the pieces together. And before you knew it, you know, before you know it, I ended up getting like a, I think I got like an A minus in that class. Can you send me links to these calls? So Sophie, you can actually go to resellingfreedom.com. If you're a member, uh, just log in and inside of the membership, all the replays are in there. If you're a subscriber to, uh, reselling freedom so yeah it's all there for you it's all there waiting so that's the cool thing about reselling freedom if you can't make a live call which i know we're all busy just watch the replays and uh yeah there's gonna literally be hundreds of hours of content in there within the next month i mean we are going absolutely wild which is great well actually not the next month next two to three months because we have about yeah so we're gonna have what about eight to ten hours of content every week in there so it's gonna add up very quick so it'll take a little longer than that but yeah, it's a process. It's a journey. Sophia, yeah, you're welcome. And thank you so much for being uh, a part of it. We really appreciate you. What's going on, Denise? How we doing? I'm just sipping a, a little bit of coffee from this mug that, um, this diner mug that I had visited when I was in, where was I? Was I in, yeah, I was in uh, New Hampshire, right? It's called the Red Arrow. I don't know if anyone's ever been to the Red Arrow. Thanks for quitting Cracker Barrel and slaying it here. <laughs> Mark, yeah, those Cracker Barrel days, man. Oh, like I said in one of my recent videos, I remember just sitting in the parking lot on a Sunday afternoon. I used to clock in around one o'clock, I believe. And uh, that was like the busiest time because everybody was, you know, at the Cracker Barrel at that time. And I remember just sitting in the parking lot, I had my little Cracker Barrel apron on and I was like, I'm about to walk into an absolute crap hole and I would go in there and it was just so stressful and there's no you can't run away from stress in life like even in business right I, I know I talk a lot about the good things with Amazon and a lot of gurus talk about how amazing Amazon is and it is amazing eBay's amazing reselling running your own business is definitely amazing but uh you can't run away from stress because the stress that I dealt with in the Cracker Barrel prepared me for the stress that I had to deal with in my own business because uh there's certainly stresses and there's a lot of headaches in life. So you can't run away from it. You just gotta prepare yourself. Pablo, what's going on, my man? Wesley says, I just polybagged some socks last night, then went into Amazon and prepping them to send FBA. It said I don't need to put labels on it. Only other thing I have sent in is books. I'm confused. You have to label everything. So I don't know if, if you're in Reselling Freedom, um, you could put a post in the group and I could respond. Or if you're in our free Facebook community, um, you, can, you can tag me and put a picture in there. But uh, hey, watch out, buddy. We got my cat running around here. Hope it doesn't knock over the stream. But uh, yeah, you have to label everything unless you choose the option to not label, which I don't recommend because uh, it's going to take a lot of time for items to get uh, checked in. But yeah, you have to label everything. Every everything a book a dvd electronic item uh whatever that item is that you said that you shipped in you have to put a label on the outside of it it's called an f and SKU label and that's an identifier barcode that amazon's going to scan in to be able to identify what this item is who it belongs to what it's selling for all the details of that item so you always have to print out an f and SKU label and i'm going to be creating a lot more videos about this and uh, discussing in detail because the whole talking head videos, it's like, well, just show me. I wanna show you. Um, so I'm actually gonna be putting some more videos together showing you firsthand how to do this. But uh, you have to label everything. You have to label everything. You could choose not to, but don't do that because it's gonna cost you extra money. Amazon's gonna charge you money for them to label it. 
and then it's gonna take a lot longer for it to get checked in. And uh, yeah, it's not easy, so I don't blame you, brother. It's, it takes pr time. I keep getting emails that Amazon has removed my listing due to potentially high pricing, but it's sometimes lower than others. Makes no sense. Yeah, I just created a, um, a guide that I put in our eBay to Amazon mentorship group. I had someone on my team, we created a whole, uh, a whole resource about this because I have someone on my team who deals with all the pricing errors and we have quite a bit of them every single week. Uh, to be honest, I'm not an expert at it. I had to hire someone and they, there's like 10 or 15 different things they have to do to fix them. There's different scenarios. Uh, if you're in the mentorship, check it out. Um, we'll see if I maybe make it available or give it away for free to the community because I know a lot of people are dealing with it. So let me see what I could do and talk to my team about that. Could you do a video step-by-step -step from the very beginning of the process through entering information on a computer through the very end of shipping? I actually have a video on my channel. If you just go to Rake and Profit Selling Books, I have a five-hour video that walks through the whole process. Thanks, Peter, of how to start and scan and list and do everything. Uh, you can check that out. It's free. It's five hours. It's a long video because you know I was taking my time to explain everything. But you could definitely check that out. Or you could just go to uh, rakeandprofit.com slash workshop and you can get access to everything there as well. Leith said, there are some items I found has that option, but your buyer will not get your exact items. Oh, I see. So you're probably talking about commingling, which I do not recommend commingling your items because you could end up shipping an item to a customer that wasn't your exact item. It's commingled with other like items from other sellers. And if it's fake, you can get the hit. So I would not recommend commingling. Hey, Peter, I really appreciate you. Wesley, you are welcome. You are welcome. Ryan says serving tables was crucial for my people, customer task management skills. Yeah, I recommend everybody gets a job at a, at a restaurant because You'll see, you'll see the best side of people, but you'll also see the worst side of people. Because there's a lot of things you can do to people to piss people off. But when you mess with somebody's food, <laughs> don't mess with somebody's food, right? What's going on, YouTube? Good morning, Steve. Great to see you. What's up, Connor? Connor says you're awesome. Thanks, Connor. My question is if Amazon FBA loses your eBay to Amazon items when receiving you're screwed. Yeah, pretty much, Connor. Uh, the good thing is they're usually pretty good about this. Um, if they accept responsibility for losing your, your item, then you could get reimbursed. I've actually had that in the past happen, but now what's happening more often is if you're doing eBay to Amazon or if you're thrifting or hitting garage sales, if you're doing any sourcing method, Facebook Marketplace, library sales, and you don't have you know direct invoices from like a wholesaler or a manufacturer, you're not gonna be able to prove that you are the owner. Same with like IP complaints and counterfeits. So that's the downside to thrifting, eBay to Amazon, anything outside of like wholesale or private label, you're pretty much screwed now. So the good thing is they, they typically don't lose items, but one of my students, this was probably, I don't know, two months ago or so, uh, she actually, I'm laughing, this isn't even funny. She had like, she went out and like sourced all these items. She was so excited. She had all these profits and she put them all in a box and shipped them to Amazon and the first box got lost. And uh, she was like pretty much screwed. And it's not even funny. I'm just laughing because it's like, that's, <laughs> that sucks so bad, your first shipment. Another person said that as well. I've shipped out hundreds and matter of fact, about two months ago, no, two, three months ago when I was in Colorado, I spent some time going through all my shipments and just reconciling everything. And I just wanted to double check everything. I have a process to make sure, like I, want, I wanted to see like out of the hundreds of boxes I ship, shipped in in 2022, how many were lost and nothing, nothing got lost at all. And I was actually shocked. Um, there were some discrepancies within my shipment. So for example, sometimes you might ship out 40 items to Amazon and then they say they only received 38. Now, what happens in that situation? Well, one of two things. Number one, if you have invoices, then you could prove that you sent it in and they could typically reimburse you. But you and I, if you're doing what I'm doing, thrifting and all that stuff, E to A, you're not gonna be able to prove it. The second thing that could happen is sometimes a week or two or a month later, they find your items and they end up back in your inventory. And you're like, oh, well, thanks, that's a little gift. 
How do you fix stranded inventory? I have two units that are in limbo. So that's another situation right there, 414. I have someone on my team who does that. Uh, if you're in the E to A mentorship, we just created a 67 page uh, Google document. We have a we have a 67 page SOP. And again, I know this doesn't help you guys, so I'm sorry. But if I don't know an answer, I'm gonna tell you I don't know how to do it. I don't deal with stranded inventory. I don't deal with high pricing errors. I learned enough to get by when I first started, but there's so many different scenarios for why you're having a pricing error or an inventory, uh, stranded inventory. So we have a, a 67 page document where there's 15 to 20 different scenarios and then we share how we handle each. If you're in the mentorship, we shared that in there. Um, I'm most likely going to put the, I think I'm going to, yeah, I, I will. I'm gonna put the pricing error and I'm gonna put the stranded inventory SOP that my team uses into Reselling Freedom. So if you're inside of Reselling Freedom, let me know, and that's only $27 a month versus it's a lot more expensive to be in our private mentorship. I'm gonna put those guides in there. So I'm gonna put the stranded inventory guide in there and I'm gonna put the pricing SOP. These are the exact uh, systems and processes and how we deal with all of this in our business. So I will put those in the Reselling Freedom today if you wanna check that out. If not, um, you can definitely go on YouTube and Google. There's, there's a lot of good videos and content out there, but a lot of it is missing and a lot of it's a bit outdated. So if you want something up to date, definitely check that out. We'll put that in there today. Raken, have you noticed your RPM monetization for YouTube is way down in January? RPM is always down in January, but this is the worst. Um, what's going on, buddy? You, are you gonna come hang out? This is what this is what Harry likes to do. Um, it's down a little bit, but um, it's not really down too much. My channel is pretty consistent. It makes around three thousand a month, uh, pretty consistently. Sometimes more, but. Again, I, I, I've just been posting a couple times a week. A lot of my monetization comes from just older videos that do really well. Isn't that right, Harry? What's going on, buddy boy? It's so funny. He loves to jump up here and, and hang out. Yeah, Ryan's saying hi to you, Harry. Yeah. Let's see what other questions we have. Good looking guy. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Say hello. Where's your sister Potter? We got Harry and Potter. All right, let's get you down, buddy. You're stealing the show. All right. Let's see if I missed any questions. Uh, Leith says, I am getting items delegated on Amazon. They just removed the page. I'm not sure what you mean by that. What accounting software do you use? What's up, Ann? I use uh, QuickBooks. All right, buddy boy, let's jump. Woo! All right, let's see. Yeah, use QuickBooks. Is E to A mentorship the new program or something different? That's different. The only way you could get into E to A mentorship is you get into the masterclass. That's only eBay to Amazon. So 99% of you guys are gonna wanna get in reselling freedom. The mentorship is just a lot more uh, specific to E to A. So definitely check out reselling freedom. Absolutely, Ann, appreciate you. 414, appreciate you. Oh, so Lee says, I'm getting items deleted on Amazon. They just removed the page. Really? I wonder why. Are you restricted? Is it stranded? I'm curious what's happening to that item. Yeah, that's the thing about Amazon. I recommend to everybody, once you get to that point, hire a virtual assistant. I have someone on my team. I think I pay her $350 an hour. She deals with all my stranded inventory, all my pricing errors, uh, shipping, uh, reconciliation, um, any issues opening up cases because for me in my personality and I think everybody has to be real with themselves what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses my weaknesses are dealing with those monotonous little details of having to like figure out these stupid annoying Amazon rules and changes I hate it it's super annoying and I just suck at that stuff so I knew very early on in my journey I had to hire someone else to do it for me and we have some checks and balances in line and I get updates every week of how many items were fixed, what were the reasons uh, that they were stranded, the reasons for uh, uh, the pricing error, so on and so forth. Denise says, Reselling Freedom is excellent resource and mentor group. Yeah, Denise has been in there. I love, uh, I love seeing Denise in there. I actually just sent her uh, a $25 little uh, reward, if this is the, the Denise that I think, for being the first one to join Reselling Freedom out of 150 people, so appreciate that. Leith says, only doing FBM now, too expensive at FBA right now. The thing is, here's the thing. 
you're gonna make probably a little bit more selling on FBA, but it's it's somewhat similar. But typically, like over the long haul, it's gonna be some, somewhat similar, right? If you sell an FBM versus FBA, depending on what type of items you're selling. But in general, it's very, very similar. Here's the thing. The reason I sell FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon, are two main reasons. Really, it comes down to one ma main reason, and it's freedom. That's it. I don't want to be held down by my business every single day, okay? I don't want to have to be shipping every day. I don't like customer service. I don't like having to answer emails. I just, this is just me. I'm sharing with you guys my my personality. I don't like dealing with all that stuff. I don't like to be stuck in the business with these little tiny details. And of course, I guess I could have a VA help me, but there's only so much a VA would be able to help me when I have items at myself. I have to answer specific questions as a merchant. FBA, I get to front load everything, put it all in boxes, right? Uh, ship everything out to Amazon. You guys might see my house is kind of a mess right now, but I literally have a ton of boxes that are going out right now. Uh, today, we have like 25 boxes. I have another eight that I have to ship out. But I like being able to front load my business, throw everything in boxes, ship it to FBA. And yeah, you have to pay some extra fees and whatnot. And we actually have on Monday, we have uh, our coach, Diane. We're gonna be covering all the fees to Amazon. So if you ever wanted to know what are the fees for selling and shipping and listing and um, everything, right? Every little fee broken down, we're gonna break that down on Monday inside of Reselling Freedom. So that's gonna be a really, really awesome uh, call. But the point I'm trying to make is I wanna run a business. I'm not saying if you're doing FBM, you're not running a business. You're certainly running a business as a merchant, but for me, right? This is just my person, personal thought. For me, I wanna be able to have my freedom to travel, to take off, to not work if I don't want to, to have the business run without me. That's my idea of a, a business that I wanna create, right? There's nothing wrong with owning a merchant fulfilled business on Amazon, um, but that's why I do FBA. I feel like I make a little bit more money and I have my time. And I need my time because I'm trying to do social media. I have coaching, real estate. There's different things that I want to do. That's why I do FBA. But there are certainly benefits to merchant fulfilling. And I'm going to do some videos about this in the future. Actually, one of our coaches, Kurt, he does over 50000 a month. He's a coach inside of Reselling Freedom as well. He's 100% merchant fulfilled. 100% merchant fulfilled. And all he does is online arbitrage. And it's all merchant fulfilled, higher end items. So I don't know what his exact buy cost is, but I think his average buy cost is like over $100 and everything gets shipped to his house. He doesn't sell a ton of items, right? I probably sell 10 times more items than him, but he sells just as much as me, if not more. I mean, my sales are down quite a bit recently because I've taken a little time off shipping. That's why I got 25 boxes going out. So I'll be back to 50 before we know it. But there's benefits to merchant fulfillment. There's less risk, there's less liability. Uh, you get your money back quicker, you have more control. Um, yeah, those are the big benefits right there. Yeah, less liability, more control, get paid quicker. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this call today. I really appreciate you all. I need to finish up this coffee and get out to the gym. Day 18 of 75 Day Hard. I know someone left a comment before, I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we're getting after it. We're taking a step forward every single day. We're growing, we're moving forward. Appreciate you, Mark. Thank, thanks so much for hanging out this morning. I appreciate you all. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining Reselling Freedom. Thanks for following the channel. Hopefully I was able to help you this morning. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Yes, sir, YouTube appreciates you 75 day hard. Give that like button a smash if you can, leave a comment, and uh, I appreciate you. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, my neighbor's waving at me. So thanks, Denise, I appreciate it. Day 18, thanks so much. Oh, you just won some cases, Leith. There we go. All right, take care.